And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Reading from Genesis chapter 11 in the King James Bible. The record of truth for our times in this age, filed in the earth by the British Crown in 1611, without copyright, for all mankind to examine henceforth freely the truth, the record of the truth. Genesis 11, friend, is the account of mankind uniting the whole earth was of one language and one speech, they are uniting to build a nation or nation build without God or any mention of God the Creator. Now, this is referred to commonly in modern times as the, quote, Tower of Babel, unquote. But it is the account of mankind joining himself together to form a nation and build a nation without God. Look at this thing closely. Okay, they said one to another, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. Let us. And then they say, let us build us a city and a tower. And then they say, let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. It's all about us. Let us do this. Let us do that. Screw God. Who's that? You mean the maker of all this stuff? My creator got a little bit incensed about that. Who does man think he is running around on a nation build with my material and he doesn't even include me in the conversation? The Bible says God came down to see what man was doing. Now, this is God making a personal visit to find out what the man is doing. He decides to break up the unified party. He, do, he decides to break up the party and confuse their language and scatter them. And they took off of building the city, the Bible says. But they're back with the United Nations without God giving the Hebrew people, Israel, God's chosen people, the land that God gave them to other people, the Arabs. It's anti-biblical. Don't be fooled. Don't be deceived. Here's the point. Genesis 11 is the account of mankind wanting to take over the earth, establish essentially a kingdom with he-man, ruling things according to his own pleasure. Let us make brick. Let us build a city. Let us make us a name. There's no mention of God here. I wonder why God wants to set up a kingdom which is on deck in Genesis chapter 12. We'll get to that in the next broadcast. God says, I don't think so, man. You're not going to build this thing without me because I'm going to set up my own kingdom. I'm going to set up my own nation, you understand. Here's the point. Mankind, ever since he disobeyed God about taking of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, in that exercise he sought to ascend to God's throne and be his own judge to determine himself what is right, what is wrong, what's good and evil. You see, man got on the wrong side of God pretty early, you understand. 
And that's the reason why God makes it so difficult on man. He worketh, he eateth by the sweat of his brow, the Bible says. In conclusion to this point, don't be fooled. God watcheth the man. You descend from Adam. Mankind elects to build a nation with no mention of God. God doesn't like that. He's setting up his own kingdom, which you have a chance to be an heir and inherit a position in there. That king of the kingdom of heaven is the king of the Jews, the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive the Son and be adopted as a member of God's kingdom and inheritance. And the king of the Jews comes back, sets his feet on the Mount of Olives. Amen.